Hello friends, Justin DeLay from Reverb here, and today we are going to break down the differences between monophonic and polyphonic synthesizers. And there's a little more to it than just one note versus many, so let's dive right in. Monophonic versus polyphonic synthesizers. What does that mean? Well, basically we're talking about the number of notes that can be played at the same time from your synthesizer. So. Monophonic means one note at a time. You can play any notes you want, but you're only getting one of them at a time. Polyphonic means more than one note at the same time. You could be playing two notes, like a root and a fifth. You could be playing a three note chord. You'd be playing a four note chord. And depending on the features of your synthesizer, you may be able to play as many as eight or 16 notes at the same time. So today we are checking out the actually very new Moog Grandmother semi-modular analog synthesizer. This is a great modern example of a mono synthesizer. And of course the Korg Minilog, one of the more popular synthesizers on reverb, polyphonic four notes. One note at a time. So what happens if we try to play two notes at the same time? Well, what you can see is the synthesizer has to make a decision between which of the two notes to play. That's called note priority, and we'll get into that in a minute. Conversely, on a polyphonic synthesizer, we can play chords. The chord mini log can play four notes at the same time. Your synthesizer may have more notes, and if so, get jazzy with it. some quick synth terminology for you. So when I was talking about monophonic versus polyphonic, I was talking about the number of notes that you can play, one note, multiple notes. In synth parlance, we use the word voice. One voice, multiple voices. If you sang in choir in middle school like I did, then you may remember that if you were in the tenor section like me, myself and my tenor friends, we were all singing the same note. So even though there were five gentlemen all singing at the same time, we're all singing the same note. And if you think about it, that one note then was being sung by five voices. In a synthesizer, you may have one or multiple oscillators. Oscillators are the fundamental waveform generator that makes your sound. A monophonic synthesizer is gonna play one note, meaning it has one complete voice. Within that voice, in this case, you have two oscillators singing one note. Listen to just oscillator two. Let's kick that up an octave. And then bring oscillator one back in, which is down an octave. And it's like you got your soprano singing up an octave and your tenor singing down an octave, but they're singing that note together. Couple of reasons why mono synths are red. One, usually, usually, not always, but they're often more affordable and sometimes they even run on batteries. So a great way to get started diving into the world of synths is to pick up an affordable mono synth. Another couple cool things about monophonic synthesizers, they can sound amazing for bass sounds most of the time. When you're making bass sounds, you're trying to keep it fairly simple, make sure that that root note comes through nice and clear to provide support for the rest of your music. So you don't always need all those crazy uh, features that you find in some of the polysynths. You can just keep it real simple, real pure, and get a great tone right out of the box. When you think about a mono synth, you're thinking about a Moog or a Korg playing bass lines. But of course, if you can play a bass line, you can also play a lead line. If we just kick it up.
You can get some really screaming upper register solos. You can drop it down and get some really rumbly bass lines and everything in between. The only thing I love more than a funky bass line is a sequenced bass line. And it just so happens that the grandmother has a really, really, really cool sequencer in it these days for what it's worth. It's just my opinion. But when you're looking at synthesizers, if it has a sequencer in it, I think you're gonna have a little more fun with it. It's pretty rad, let's check it out. A couple things here. One, we can start with the arpeggiator. A lot of synthesizers have an arpeggiator, especially mono synths. Let's check out what that means. I'm gonna put it in arpeggio mode. We're at a pretty fast rate. And let's just see what happens. This synth has a hold button. If it has a hold button, if your synth has a hold button, you push it, take your hands off, still playing. So, so fun because now I can. And you could do that for about an hour and enjoy it. All I'm doing here, this is an arpeggiator. All it's gonna do is the notes I play on the keyboard, so in this case, it's just gonna go up and down, up and down, up and down those notes forever. A sequencer, on the other hand, you're gonna tell it what notes to play and it's gonna play it back in that order. Cool feature that you find on many mono synths is what is called glide. Another name for glide is actually portamento, which is the slightly more sophisticated word for the same thing. Glide equals portamento, portamento equals glide. That sounds like this. Put simply, the amount of time it takes to glide from one note to another, perfect for recreating the sound of an ambulance going by. Perfect for recreating the THX sound at the beginning of movies. Perfect for that foghorn sound you've been dying to add to your next track. One of the cool things about a mono synth is you can play them in both staccato and legato fashion and you're gonna get different results. Staccato means shorter, more abrupt. Legato, on the other hand, implies a smoother playing style where one note overlaps the other. Legato. In a mono synth, not all of them, but a lot of them, you can tell the synth how you want it to respond to your legato playing technique. Because if you think about it, if you push more than one key on a mono synth, what in the world happens? Well, that, my friends, is where we get into note priority. Most mono synths are going to be set up by default with last note priority. The last note you play is what you're gonna hear. So. Right, so it doesn't matter if I, if, if I start up here and then go down here. Because I played that one last, it's gonna play that note. If I start down here and I go up here, it's gonna play that one because that was the last note I played. Last note priority. Two additional styles, low note priority and high note priority. I bet you can guess what those do. Low note priority means that no matter what you're doing on the keyboard, whatever the lowest note you're playing is, is what you're gonna hear. Conversely, high note priority, whatever the highest note you're playing on the keyboard is, is what's gonna cut through. Let's talk about polyphonic synths. Polysynths are great for playing chords. If you 
come from a piano background or maybe an organ background or you have experience playing keys where you just sort of expect to be able to play every note, a polyphonic synth might feel a lot more natural to you at first play. The thing that you have to keep in mind is that unlike a piano or maybe a digital piano, you're still gonna be limited in the number of notes you can play. So in this case, again, four notes means you're probably gonna be doing something like playing a bass line with one hand, maybe a three note chord with the other hand, you know, maximize the four notes you can use. Some synths have six, eight, 16. This allows for more complex chords, more complex and evolving sounds over time. But in my experience, four notes, pretty good. It's going to fill in a lot of the space in your music. And because synths put out such a rich, full sound, sometimes when you stack up too many notes at the same time on a poly, it just, it can almost make too much sound. Uh, so really being thoughtful about, you know, picking one, two, three, maybe four notes to fit into your arrangement really helps the synth find its spot in the mix. Another really classic use of a polysynth is to play pads, which in synth terms are big, evolving, almost soundscapes that really benefit from being able to stack multiple notes together in a chord to create a rich harmonic structure for the rest of your music. Let's see if we can find ourselves a little pad action inside of here. One second. You may say to yourself, wait a minute, that one plays multiple notes. Doesn't that mean it can just play one note? You are correct, my friends. It can just play one note. So why would we buy a monosynth when our polysynth can play multiple notes or it can play one note? Different polysynths are going to have different monophonic capabilities. For instance, with the Korg Minilog, you can see here, they actually do a really nice job of making this really clear. You've got this thing called voice mode here. Poly, duo, unison, mono, chord, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For a mini log or for many other poly synths, you're going to be looking for something called like a unison mode. Uh, in this case, Korg is nice enough to give us both a unison and a mono mode, which are basically two different ways of doing the same thing, which is taking all of those wonderful oscillators that we have inside of a poly synth and putting them all together, stacking all of them up and only playing one note at a time. And this can lead to some massive sounds. So I grabbed a synth bass preset and I'm going to play it in poly mode. I'm just going to play one at a time, but I'm going to play it in the poly mode. Cool sound. But if we put it into unison mode, again, it's going to bring all those oscillators together. Already a richer, more interesting sound. Let's keep going. Let's try the mono mode. Again, thicker, richer, more sound. So you're looking to buy your first synthesizer. Should you buy a mono or a poly? Far be it for me to tell you what to do. But in my experience, a poly synth that has a good mono or unison mode in many ways is the best of both worlds. So I would definitely encourage you when you're checking out synthesizers, take a look and make sure that the poly that you're looking at has some sort of mono unison mode in it to get the best of everything you can get out of a mono synth. We just ran and grabbed the brand new Korg Prologue. Uh, this is a beast of a poly synth, and what I wanted to demo here was on some of the bigger, slightly more sophisticated poly synths, because you have more notes to play at the same time, some poly synths have the ability to split the keyboard, and what I mean by that is you define a point on the keyboard, and you say any, any keys down here are going to play one synth sound, maybe like a synth bass sound, 
and any notes up here are going to play a different sound, maybe a chordal pad kind of sound, like this. Really cool way to do a lot, all at the same time with one keyboard. Today we took a closer look at monosynths and polysynths, what makes them different, why they're unique, and why you might want to have one of each in your arsenal. Honestly, we're just scratching the surface here. Like all things synthesis, these things go quite deep. In future episodes, we will be going further down the rabbit hole. If there are specific questions about monophonic versus polyphonic voice architectures, et cetera, et cetera, Drop some questions in the comments below. We will be answering, and we may even hit uh, some of those questions in a future episode. But for now, I am Justin DeLay from Reverb. Thank you so much. Get out there and play some synths.